the El Nino induced drought is upon us in Zimbabwe and other parts of the world. And that has also affected the quality and also the amount of rainfall that we have. Thus also affecting the planting patterns by our farmers. And this is what we want to understand. What is the El Nino? What are the effects? And how can we change our planting patterns so that we avert drought and hunger? And to do that, we've got an agriculturalist, uh, Klemio Machingaifa. Welcome to Economic Forum. Thank you for having me. And Economic Forum is a program that brings you various topics. They can be about agriculture, industry, education, religion. We try and look at issues and how they affect our economy. As we talk about the El Nino induced drought, Mr. Machingaiva, uh, what is it? Where does it come from? Uh, is, this is a phenomenon that is caused when uh, in the Pacific area you have uh, warm winds coming through and blowing uh, towards this direction. Now when those winds come through, they heat up the waters. And when the seas are heated up, that has an impact on the rainfall patterns that we have here. We will then have either above average or below average rainfall. And where we have below average rainfall, this is when we have our droughts. So whatever is happening in the Pacific area, those winds when they come through, they have an impact on the temperatures of the seas. And those temperatures have an effect on the seasons that we get. How so, often does this happen? This, the cycles are three to seven years. That's when we get the uh, severe El Nino effect in this area. But let, let me also say that something that is often confused when the El Ninos come through is the climate change um, scenario. There, there is now an understanding that uh, climate change is what is causing the El Nino effect. In fact, what, when you look, when you go through the history, you will notice that we've had the El Nino effect for years. And I know that from what I can remember, it's for more than 70 years, this has been coming through. This is before we started seeing the impact of climate change. But climate change worsens the effect of El Nino. Mm -hmm. But there's also something else that is related, that is called La Nina. Yes. What is the relationship? Okay. La Nina, in the same area, when the trade winds uh, come through and they're coming at high speeds, we get the negative, uh, the, the positive effect. We then get good seasons in this area. The people who then suffer are people in the Americas and in Asia. Because the winds are then directed towards that area. They have a negative effect in those areas when we get a positive effect in, our, in, our, in Africa. Mm -hmm. Having said all that, let's come back home and see how this has started affecting us right from the winter plow that we do. Okay. Uh, was there anything you know, that we salvaged out of our winter planting this season uh, with this uh, phenomenon? Um, <clears throat> what we started seeing were very high temperatures. And the impact of high temperatures is that it dries the soils, it hardens the soil. So those that would have wanted to tend their soils found it very difficult. But you also have other areas where people have st stopped actually doing the normal plowing. What people were then supposed to go in and do is to mark their uh, areas where they are going to plant and dig holes in preparation for planting. But because of the dry um, soils, some have not been able to do that. So we've seen the negative effect um, of El Nino in that people have not been able to prepare their lands for, for planting. So the lessons learned uh, during what would have been a winter plowing, how do then uh, they cascade in, into you know, later farming? Okay. I, in a normal season, if you prepare your land on time, you are able to plant on time, and you then, if the rains come and they are normal, you have a good planting season or growing season. So your yields are likely to be high. If you delay uh, preparing your land, even when the rains come, it means uh, late planting has an effect on your 
uh, yields at the end of the season. Now for this year, because people have not been able to do that, even as we speak, there are people who have not been able to go and put in those holes for planting seed. And normally by this time of the year, uh, in the good rainfall areas, region two, they would have planted their crops. And this has not happened. So even if they were to plant now, they are not going to re uh, attain the yields they normally get because it is late. So at this point, what is it that you tell or educate farmers uh, you know, across the board, be they peasant farmers, be they commercial farmers, so that they understand all these new and old phenomena and they are able to deal with them? Farmers should work with the extension workers. Those extension workers would always be informed in terms of what type of season is coming through. And, and where possible, farmers should also listen to the weather forecast. There, there's, there's always a long-range forecast which gives an indication of what season we're likely to get, apart from what rains we're likely to expect, either the following day, the following week, or the following month. Those patterns help farmers to plan. You plan in terms of what operations you can do, you plan in terms of what crops you are able to grow that season. But that also comes from the, the reports that come through. Like right now, this year we have a, a forecast which is showing us that in Zimbabwe, the net effect is negative because of El Nino. It's affecting South Africa, it's affecting part of Zambia. So we know that uh, overall, uh, this region, we're going to, to suffer in terms of agricultural production. That's Mr. Clemio Machingaifa, he's an agriculturalist and is talking about the effects of the El Nino induced drought. He has just defined what it is so that we understand it and its patterns, as well as what is also known as the La Nina. Now, with such patterns, farmers also have to change the way they do their planting and so forth. So when we come back, we're going to also be looking at how uh, we can avert hunger uh, through different tips that Mr. Machingaifa is going to give us. So join us in the second segment of Economic Forum. We are now going to be looking at the impact of the El Nino induced drought. What is it that it has caused? What can we see? What is visible? And how can that uh, be affected? Or how can it be managed? Because we cannot avert it since it is there. We are now in the second segment of Economic Forum, and our guest is Mr. Clemio Machingaifa. He's an agriculturalist and is giving us tips about how we can face and deal with the El Nino induced drought. Now let's go on to the impact. The, the impact of the El Nino, if you look at the areas that have been delineated uh, as zones that are going to suffer the worst effect, uh, let me start with Zambia. The northwestern uh, province uh, is where we have the source of the Zambezi River. That area is going to be hit hard. Um, and we know that when there's, a, when there's nothing flowing through significantly into the Zambezi, it has an impact on the Victoria Falls, so it will affect tourism. It has an impact... Impact in the sense that the water... Uh, levels will be will, very low. Will be very low. So yes. it will, we, will not, we will not have the normal uh, high-flowing levels that we normally see, which give us a lot of steam coming out of, or vapor coming out of the, the falls. So you will not have that beautiful scenery at the Victoria Falls. That's the first thing. The second thing is that when you look at Kariba Dam, the huge inflows that you normally expect, we're not going to get that. So that is an, e an effect on power generation, right? And, and, and if you have an, e an effect on power generation, you know, you know that irrigation, uh, is, is largely dependent on power. So again, that cycle is coming through to the farm. Uh, the second thing is that uh, the average farmer who relies on rain-fed agriculture, 
is not going to, to get the normal rainfall patterns uh, for this year. So that means um, either there's going to be a complete crop write-off or no crop at all. So the effect is that farmers, unless they look at other strategies in the agricultural sector, crop growing may be history for this year. Now, where, where there's a possibility of growing a crop, farmers now have to change from their normal long season crop, they have to go to very short season crop. Maybe it will also help to mention some of these crops. A, a good example would be sorghum. Uh, um, another example would be millets. Um, on, on millets, I'm talking about, uh, let me talk about Rio, right? Because uh, the season is gone. But for your normal commercial crop, I think it is too late. So those are the areas that people have to look at. The sec second area that the people can look at are very simple things like you know, there's now technology where you talk about um, elevator or high-rise production. This is a scenario where you have shelves and you put your crops in bags or tins and you grow them. In a small, a small space like this, you can actually come up with a, a lot of kgs. So you are now looking at uh, utilizing out-of-the-box technologies to, for, so that you can survive with your family. You have not said anything about maize, which we are all used to. What is the position? The, on the maize story, I think it is sad because I think it's getting very late for most variety, varieties. So you have to look at the very short season. Um, I think some, some companies use um, packages with uh, showing a monkey uh, to show that this is a short season variety. So you have to go for the very short season varieties for this year. What is the impact on the national granary? The impact on the national granary is that the majority of the farmers in the small scale, in the communal areas, and in some A2 areas are likely to get not enough for their consumption. So the grain, national granary must have something to supplement what the farmer might have. So the, if we do not have enough in the national granary, we might have to import. You mentioned that you know, when it comes to planting, it might be a hopeless situation and farmers have to try and look for something else. Yeah. What is it that they can look at? If it is, if it is not crops, then you are looking at maybe um, bees. They have to look at honey making. Um, they have to look at other skills in their setup so that they can survive. But what, what would be very important, if possible, is for us to start looking at mitigating factors for the coming seasons so that we avoid this experience in the coming seasons. But that is very important. Because for this season, it is late. A lot of things that we should have done last year and we didn't, we are seeing the impact now. So we now have to prepare ourselves for the West. And, and as we do that, we must look at next year. Mm -hmm. Mr. Klemio Machingaifa, is our guest today. He is talking about the effects of the El Nino induced drought, giving some tips on how the planting methods can be changed and other strategies that can be taken by farmers in order to ensure that there is something for survival in the country. So join us in the third and final segment of Economic Forum. In this segment, we are going to be looking at drought mitigation factors. We have talked about what El Nino is and the impact that it has on our agriculture. So Mr. Clemio Machingaiva is here uh, to continue with his tips and also information to help us as well as our farmers. Now, what are the drought mitigation factors that you would list uh, for farmers and even ordinary persons uh, to implement? Um, there are areas where farmers have access to water. 
This, is, this could be in terms or in ways. It is very important that they find ways to draw that water to their land. I know there's a deliberate program by government um, where they are re rehabilitating irrigation schemes and setting up schemes on some uh, larger commercial farms. But um, it might not reach everybody as of now. So where possible, farmers who have access to water now have to find ways to draw that water to their land and then grow a crop using that water. Um, that, that is very important uh, because it's the only way that they, they will be able to grow a crop this year, given where we are with the season. So we are looking at existing dams. We also have to look at uh, those that will still want to put a crop in the land. One of the important things that we should look at uh, is our soil conservation, uh, soil and water conservation methods. This in includes tie ridges. This is where you want to grow a crop on a ridge, but between the ridges you put, uh, you, you, you kind of heap soils so that if you get any rainfall, the water that comes through does not flow through, but is stored and it goes into your ridges. And so the crop is now able to draw from what is stored within the land. So that is one thing that one can do. The second thing that can be done is you just dig holes where you are going to plant your seeds. Now, by not turning your soils, you are also taking advantage of um, what was left in the previous season, your, your, your old uh, stocks from the uh, crop that you've just harvested. What that will do is that those stocks will also stop water from flowing through your piece of land. And it will hold, they will hold back um, some of the water that might flow and it will give you time to seep into or to sink into your land. So avoid actually going through and turning your soils, but putting in uh, holes and planting in those holes as it is now. Those, those methods would help you to conserve whatever little moisture there may be. And any moisture that comes through will then be able to percolate and your crops can use that. In fact, before you continue, you mentioned an important point that dams can also be useful. Mm -hmm. What has been the situation regarding our dam levels as the El Nino induced drought uh, came our way? Well, one of the challenges that, that you will find if you went through and you looked at most of the big dams that we have is that because people stopped conserving um, the soils in their lands, and some people uh, were planting right down the slopes. That has facilitated a lot of excessive er um, erosion. And the, some of the soils that we have lost have drained through into the dams. So there are some dams that look full now, or have some, a certain amount of water. But in fact, there's a very high level of silt. So you might not have as much water as might appear to be on the surface. So. Whatever we do on our land is an impact on uh, soil erosion. And soil er erosion damages the capacity of our dams and our weirs. So it is very important that we, we make sure that the crop husbandry practices on our lands are such that we conserve the soil, we conserve water, we don't facilitate soil erosion. Not at the levels that we are seeing. What do we do uh, with wetlands? Well, wetlands um, are an important uh, factor in, in, in our lives. In that, wetlands are, in most cases, a source of a lot of the rivers we have. But over time, they have not been managed. Over time, they've been abused. We have seen people going into wetlands and plowing or planting in wetlands. We have seen people going into wetlands and building in wetlands. And what that does is that as soon as your wetland is developed, they stop holding water. That has an impact on the sources or the, the rivers that were um, gaining from those um, wetlands. And the impact is that as your wetland dries, your river dries, 
and when your rivers dry, your dams dry, and the impact goes on. And if you look at some of the big rivers, it also means that the Zambezi also gets less. And when you look at the Zambezi, the impact is on our power. And the power affects our irrigation. Because they, they are sources, and yes. if those sources don't have enough water, they will not be filled as we expect them. That's to. true. Yes. And, and one of, one of the, the reasons that is very clear to demonstrate the impact of poor husbandry on our lands is what has happened to the Sai. The sands in the survey have come from lands that we are plowing and planting today because of the uh, poor husbandry practices in those areas. People have not largely adhered to uh, practices that help us to conserve our soils, help us to conserve our water. But because of that, we've allowed our, our soils to be washed and this is what we now have in the survey. And once it is in the survey, it is of no use to us. Mm -hmm. You are talking about good practices. And one of the best practices which was preached uh, many years ago but is going down is conservation. Yeah. Conservation, you know, starting right with the, those, uh, right from those uh, who lead us in educating us about agriculture as well as in the family. Yeah. Is it still there? The, it, is not, it is not practiced, it is not uh, being taught to the extent that it was taught much earlier, or early in, you know, be, well, as we were moving into independence. Um, it is very important that we actually go back and we start teaching and adhering to conservation practices because they help us. It might appear like hard work, it might appear like it was punishment, but if you look at the impact of not adhering to some of those practices, you, you now realize that we are losing because we've lost a lot of topsoil because of that. So we need to go back and relook at what needs to be done so that we can conserve our soil, we can conserve our water. Well, that's Mr. Clemio Machingaifa. He's an agriculturalist and we've covered a lot of ground, especially on the El Nino induced drought. Uh, we talked about even its effect on our winter plowing season, many farmers did not do much because there wasn't enough rain. And as we got into the end of the year, normally around December, there will be a lot of activity, mm. but as we got into the end of the year, really there wasn't much activity. And he also talked about uh, the impact uh, right round, how it has affected us. Now, what remains is to thank you very much, Mr. Machingaifa, for coming on to Economic Forum uh, to educate our viewers and ourselves about the impact of the El Nino induced drought. If you have any questions that you would like to ask about programs that we give to you, you can do so on the numbers that are showing on your screen. If you would like to engage with us about some of the issues that we discuss, or even able to bring back our experts to answer those questions, you can do so on the social media platforms that again are showing on the screen. If you have missed some of the episodes of Economic Forum on ZBC TV, you can actually watch them on our YouTube channel, which is Economic Forum Zimbabwe. So on behalf of our guest, Mr. Klemio Machingaifa, an agriculturalist, as well as the production crew, this is John Masugu wishing you happy viewing. <laughs>